New York Comic Con 2023 is now behind us, and after the fourth New York Comic Con, I've got to say, this is the worst one that I've been to. And don't get me wrong, I had a great time, and it was mainly because of you guys, man. All the people out there that I met during the convention, we shook hands, took pictures, got to hang out with friends. I got to meet my idol, my favorite artist. So I'll talk about all the great things that happened at the convention, but I will also talk about why I feel like it was the worst one yet. So first of all, thank you for everybody who came up to me and said what's up and went out their way to say they enjoyed watching the channel. I mean, that was amazing. I gotta give the hugest of all shout outs to Very Gary. First of all, Very Gary killed it at the convention with a huge booth, great inventory, and he always looks out. Thank you so much, Gary. And I gotta give a couple other quick shout outs. Comic Tom for always looking out. Johnny Desjardins, we did the drop. I'll talk about that in a little bit. Davis Ryder, same thing. Thanks for all the help and support. So first of all, let's talk about day one. I messed up. I booked a flight that got us in there Thursday evening. So I missed the entire beginning of the show. I don't know what the hell I was thinking when I booked it, man. I think I was thinking more of like San Diego Comic Con and is there a preview night? Is there not? I don't know. So I messed up. But no big deal. Shout out to my boy Steve. He did pick us up from the airport, so he saved us like $150 Uber because we flew in from JFK. Big mistake. Got to go Jersey or LaGuardia. Friday, that's when I was able to go to the convention for the first time. And the convention was dope if you're into comics, which most of us are. So I feel like it was very similar to San Diego in that aspect. If you're there for comics, whether it's back issues, whether it's exclusives, that was the poppin' area of the show for me. So Friday, I was able to walk the convention floor. I was able to pick up exclusives. I was able to meet Joe Jusco. If you guys know, that is the creator who got me into comics with his 1992 Marvel Masterpiece set. I've seen him in passing at other conventions. He's like one of the artists that I'm starstruck in front of. And what's funny is like in the industry and people that have met him are like, Joe? <laughs> like you're, you're starstruck for Joe? Like he's such a down-to-earth guy, New Yorker. But uh, I finally decided to uh, meet him in person. I picked up some books from Comic Mint. I had Joe Jusco sign them. And as I'm having him sign, I'm noticing like my peripheral that Fee is back there. And I'm like, oh, she's filming this and getting footage. But I'm also seeing at the corner of my eye like, yo, there's like a whole tripod. I didn't bring a tripod in here. Shout out to my man DJ Lynx. He was there at Nomas booth gathering footage. So he happened to see me you know, getting books signed from Jusco. And I don't know if it's just the fact that he figured, hey, I'd get some footage of Jem, or I think he might know that that's like my idol. So he's over there grabbing footage of me meeting Joe and getting the signatures. So that is incredible. You had upstairs where you had creators, you had retailers, and then you had downstairs where you had Artist Alley. And it was popping. You had great creators there. If you were there to get signatures, if you were there to get commissions, remarks, whatever, I'm sure you had a blast. In that sense, they held it down. You're going to hear a lot of people saying that there was a lot of anime and manga there. Yeah, so on the main floor, that presence was felt. And I'm not so much against that. I think that makes sense. They had an enormous Goku inflatable blow-up doll you can see from the entire floor. But yeah, you're going to hear a lot about that. You're going to hear that somebody took a shit on the floor at the convention. <laughs> it was such a bad event that somebody actually took a shit on the floor. I later found out that it might have been their service dog, which is a lot better, but still, can you... Pick it up, man. Come on. I was able to attend a panel. I got to give a huge shout out to my boy, Eris, over at Variant. He was hosting the panel. You had Robert Kirkman there, Daniel Warren Johnson. You had Joshua Williamson. You had the Energon Universe creators. And it really felt like the next wave, man. They assembled this team with Transformers, Void Rivals, and G.I. Joe, which I've been reading Void Rivals. I read Transformers 1. I was kind of interested in G.I. Joe. But after that panel, I'm like, yo, I'm more excited for G.I. Joe than any of the other stuff. The Cobra Commander stuff, the Duke stuff. And the whole time I'm watching Eris and I'm like, damn, I'm so glad I didn't have to host this thing. <laughs> but he did a great job. Man. He's a super professional. He signed my copy of Astonishing Times, the trade paperback, which is an amazing read. If I read it and it was whack, I wouldn't even mention it. Eris's book, Astonishing Times, is an amazing indie superhero comic book. A lot of indie comics are not superhero related, right? You have like situational things happening here. But this, I haven't felt like this since I read Invincible. That feeling of, wow, this is like a world with superheroes. And, and they really fleshed out a lot of it in those five issues. So 
I got Eris to sign it. We hung out with Eris as much as we could during the convention. And then we got to enjoy the city. Me and Fee got to walk around. We hit Times Square. We took a couple of pictures. We got Vito's Pizza. We, <laughs> we made sure to eat all of the staples that we like while we're out there. Saturday is where I have this big whatnot stream scheduled with Johnny Desjardins. We did a cover for his sketchbook. It was a Spider-Man symbiote cover. And uh, we were trying to figure out the logistics of it. Like, are we going to stream from the hotel? Are we going to stream from your hotel? Are we going to stream from the convention? Bad idea. Terrible service. And we uh, had to figure something out. And this is where, like, the stars aligned for me. So we're staying at the Courtyard Marriott. So I'm thinking, you know, when I walked into the lobby, there was, like, a lot of common area spaces. And even, like, late night the night before, people are just chilling. And it's kind of quiet. It's not really popping. I'm like, maybe we could just post up in, like, the lobby and do something. So I figure, you know what, let's ask the guy at the front desk just to make sure. I don't want to get kicked out or whatever. So we ask him, and, and the closest thing I can <laughs> explain of what we're trying to accomplish there is like, we're doing a podcast. And I'm already a little bit nervous because we're supposed to stream and then raid Beachside, which if you know Tony, he can be very loud. <laughs> so I'm like, damn, let me ask the front desk. The front desk guy goes, yeah, hell yeah, man, you could use that. But let me just check with the manager first. So I'm thinking, yo, there's no way he comes back with the thumbs up. You're going to need a permit. You're going to need a da-da-da. You're going to have to book a conference room. He's like, yo, the manager said do it, but do it downstairs on the bottom floor lobby, which has a kitchen, a bar, more space. We go down there. I was like, yo, this is crazy. It's basically the lobby upstairs but way bigger, way more space, all these little cuts to do exactly what we're trying to do. So I'm like, yo, Johnny, we're doing it at the courtyard. We're like the closest you could be to the convention at this hotel anyway. And then I'm like, you know what? This is a good opportunity to like hang out with people, friends of mine that I've known for years that, you know, during these conventions, it's very hard to link up. So I'm like, yo, everybody come to the courtyard, man. We're going to be chilling. We're going to do a whatnot stream. So DJ Links came through. I hit up my man X, Illusionary Comics from Instagram, who we've been friends like almost 10 years now, before YouTube days. So he comes through. But we ended up having like this amazing hangout. It was almost like fireplace setting, but we were indoors. We had a bunch of couches in a circle. Comic Tom was there. Davis Ryder was there. Like all of us were just hanging out. And it was a super dope time. That was the highlight of the show for me, man. Meeting you guys and then getting to hang out with our friends. Yeah, we were doing whatnot stuff. But, yo, honestly, we have mad fun doing that. We gave away a piece of original art, which was amazing. So that was really the highlight for me. Now, that's Saturday night. Sunday, we ended up leaving. Our plane left at 3.30. So essentially, we just kind of leave at checkout. Why am I saying this was the worst convention ever? It sounds like I had a great time. Again, which I did. But the reason why I felt like this was the worst New York Comic Con is that I'm primarily a statue collector. I love going to San Diego Comic Con, New York Comic Con, doing statue booth tours. That's where all these companies debut their newest statues. They'll have recent ones on display. And that is the highlight for me. Ever since 2018, when I started doing this whole convention grind, almost zero representation from the statue companies. Sideshow wasn't there. Iron Studios wasn't there. When Sideshow comes, they tend to bring Prime One Studio pieces or even what? Queen Studios. PCS wasn't there. XM Studios came one year. They didn't come this year. So really, the only statue company that I kind of saw there from like the type of stuff that I collect was pure art. So if you're a statue collector, which I'm sure many of you are who watch this channel, I think it was a huge disappointment in that sense, man. I don't know what's going on. I know Sideshow has been doing Sideshow Con since the pandemic. It probably just makes more sense business-wise and Sideshow's got to worry about employees. All these companies do. So not only is it like a hassle in that sense, but crazy expensive, but it sucks. Like that to me is the pinnacle of these events, man. So you had the lack of statue representation there i had a great time i had a blast i'm always gonna have a blast when i go out to these conventions and we're hanging out and meeting people just man i don't know what's going on this statue hobby what's going on with the statue hobby it got oversaturated it got too expensive they priced people out the shipping got crazy now we're at new york comic-con 2023 and really not one of the main companies is there damn that's crazy Man, but I hope I didn't forget anybody. Just big shout out to everybody there, man. Golden Age Guru was holding it down at the Silver Age booth. Everybody that I hung out with, we had a blast. Let me know what you guys thought about New York Comic Con. If you were there, let me know what your thoughts were below. If you were watching from home, what did it look like from home? Did it feel like there was a lot of announcements? Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments down below. Appreciate you watching. Stay minty fresh. Peace.
This video is brought to you by Ninja Funk. Ninja Funk is already celebrating their one year anniversary and they're having a huge event at the Ninja Exchange in Carlsbad, California. Not only will there be a live signing with co-creators JPG and Steve Shewitt, but they're bringing out legendary artists Jim Lee and David Mack. But that's not all, we have special guest John Dolmayan, the creator of Essencia, founder of Torpedo Comics, and happened to play drums in a little band called System of a Down. If you're in the area, make sure to come swing by on November 18th and 19th for the celebration.